Today we're going to talk about something that often gets a bad rap. The thought of boundaries can conjure up images of fences, no trespassing signs, and general distancing. The book Boundaries by Do Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend uses both Christian faith and contemporary psychology to create a strong argument for why healthy boundaries are essential for your emotional and spiritual health. The back cover reads, Christians often focus so much on being loving and giving that they forget their own limits and limitations. Have you ever found yourself wondering, can I set limits and still be a loving person? How do I answer someone who wants my time, love, energy, or money? And why do I feel guilty when I consider setting boundaries? As a child of divorce, I tended to let people run over my walls because I was afraid to say no and face more rejection. But at the same time, I feared letting anyone get too close, so I constructed a fortress around my heart to avoid having to say yes. Many of us struggle with setting and maintaining healthy boundaries. We either let people trample our fences or we erect stone walls where wooden fences would suffice. We also set overly strict boundaries on ourselves in some areas of our hearts and minds and not enough boundaries in others. But as Christians, we need to remember that a life with boundaries is pre pleasing to God. In fact, in Matthew 5, 37, he told his disciples this, let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. How many times have you said yes, but wanted to say no? How often have you said no when you needed to say yes? Have you ever considered that evil as Jesus describes here? If you have clear, well-defined boundaries, your yes will mean yes and your no will mean no. And sometimes boundaries may seem like restrictions, but like all of God's law, they provide a true freedom and lasting peace. Freedom to say things like, no, I won't be able to lead the committee this year, but can I help you find a replacement? Or no, you can't go out with your friends tonight because you didn't finish your homework. Or yes, I'll stand up for myself because God doesn't want me to cower in fear. Over the years, I've learned that saying no is wise, not guilt producing. When I see myself as a beloved child of God who can't do it all, I've also learned that saying yes is also wise, but only when I make a commitment out of a grateful and generous spirit. Moving from a life without boundaries to a life with boundaries takes practice. It also takes accountability and support. I've practiced many times with my friends before saying no, since I often face resistance for rebuilding my fences. My friends also help me learn to say yes to the best life possible. Setting boundaries can help us trust ourselves and in turn, trust others. It can help us treat ourselves as others and others as equals with respect and dignity. Setting boundaries helps us recognize what's essential for us and gives us the courage to stand up for it. So if boundary setting is such a good thing, then what's the problem? Well, the problem is that it's hard, especially for people who are not used to doing it. It can make you question yourself and your intentions and kind of turn your world topsy-turvy. Here are a couple things you can do to kickstart your boundary setting journey. Number one, take inventory. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like you were being taken advantage of, taken for granted or treated disrespectfully? When you feel any of these things, you need to ask yourself, what are you feeling? Is it anger, hurt, betrayal? What brought about these feelings? What did the other person do? Did they disregard your feelings or act dismissive? Did they cross a line you'd rather no one cross? How did you react to this situation? Did you ignore it, make an excuse for them, or get angry and resentful? Why did you tolerate the behavior and respond this way? What were you afraid of? You see, the first step is being conscious of what happened and what you're feeling. This is essential because it helps you become aware of your needs, wants, and limits. Notice when someone is neglecting or violating them and reflect on how you usually respond and why. Number two is to be honest and courageous. The second step is being honest about what you would like to do in this situation and reflecting so you can find the fairest and healthiest way to respond. Then comes the hardest part, finding the courage to act even if it may displease anger or irritate the other person. 
everything inside of you might scream that this is a mistake. You may feel scared, anxious, and even unsafe speaking up. But remember that ignoring the issue is not a solution because you will just end up feeling resentful if you continually avoid saying what you really want to say. Okay, fair warning here. I'm going to tell you what no one else will tell you, but you probably already know. Setting boundaries can make you feel guilty. Somewhere down the line, you may have learned that your needs, feelings, and wants are less important than others. When you start making changes, it can feel like you are embarking on a journey of selfishness and betraying the very core of your being. Number three, you'll probably make mistakes. I mean, you're learning a new skill and mistakes are bound to happen. You can overreact to minor issues or fail to communicate your feelings and needs accurately. I mean, there's no right or wrong here. We're on a learning curve. And you can always change your decision or apologize later if you realize that your decision wasn't the best. Number four, it'll sometimes feel at war with yourself. To some extent, that's what it is. A war with what you once believed to be true but isn't anymore. A war against your default responses. Number five, it is not easy. It will sometimes mean wrong turns, slip ups, and lost relationships, but if you're honest with yourself, you may realize that those relationships were already dead to begin with. You were trying to nurture doomed relationships because you were afraid to let them go. And number six, it takes all the tears you have. It breaks you, but when it's all over, you build strength, wisdom, and trust in yourself. You learn to give your feelings more credit, knowing they're an internal signal of something and that you need to investigate them further so you can decide what's really best for you. So yes, boundaries can be life-changing, but the emotional upheaval that often accompanies them isn't for the faint-hearted. Changing yourself, getting out of your comfort zone, doing what is right for you can trigger your reptilian brain, which makes you crave safety and makes you feel like you're doing something wrong. So in conclusion, healthy boundaries are imperative in maintaining one's emotional and mental well-being in today's world. The confidence that we talked about in the last episode can help empower you to establish these boundaries, communicate and uphold these boundaries effectively, which will allow you to protect yourself, your self-respect, your self-worth, and your overall mental health. By valuing yourself and your boundaries, you can navigate modern relationships with greater balance, resilience, and authenticity. 